and we, we bought some gold and silver. Um, and you're going to lose money because you bought it at the freaking top of the market. The gist of isn't it gold, so isn't gold a wonderful investment? <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, hey guys, Louie back with you to examine gold a little further and find out if um, you should have it in your portfolio. Uh, I'm going to review a video that Dave Ramsey did back in October of 2018. I'll play you a couple clips of it, but the, the gist of this is him uh, telling uh, someone to, uh, to sell their gold and silver. Um, and I did not pick this video out. It just randomly came up on my feed, and I was just kind of amazed by the story. So I'd like to dissect it a little bit and let you know what Dave gets wrong. Hold on. Sure, what's up? Um, I have a question about cashing in gold and silver coin um, at a loss in order to pay off my mortgage early. A few years back in 2010, and we bought some gold and silver. Um, and you're going to lose money because you bought it at the freaking top of the market. Yes. Okay, first off, let's review uh, whether 2010 was the top of the market. I'm going to show you a graph right here, and uh, you're going to see that uh, 2010 actually was not the top of the market. So there is thing number one that was done wrong on this call. <laughs> Gold has, has not got a good track record long term. As a matter of fact, it sucks as an investment over a long period of time. And so what's this gold and silver worth today if you cash it all in? Around 100000 Okay. All right, so then um, this uh, interview continued, and he did, in fact, uh, tell her to sell her gold and silver, her $100,000 worth of gold and silver. At the, uh, as of the release date of the video, that gold would have been trading for about $1,230. So, uh, yes, it is higher than that right now. But more importantly, I think what Dave misses, gosh, it's so many things he misses, because he really hates metals, and he is trying to dumb down investing to a point where uh, it can be true most of the time for most of the people. But I suspect that if you're watching this video, you don't consider yourself to be most of the people, and you also suspect something is wrong in our currency system and our investing system. So let's go through what it is that Dave didn't ask her that he probably should have. All right, number one question that you should have asked, Dave, what percentage of your assets is in gold and silver? 100%? Well, then you're an idiot. Okay, I'm sorry. Nobody should have 100% of your money in gold and silver. But um, what percent of your assets, Leah, were in gold and silver? 5%? 10%? There is tremendous value in having a hedge in your portfolio for a small portion of your portfolio to counter the currency risk and the inflation risk. All right, thing number two. Buy low, sell high. All right, don't buy high and sell low. And I've seen him made this, make this recommendation many, many times. He just assumes that um, you know you, you you should just get out of any losing investment, uh, regardless of the timing of the market. But here's the reality, and here here is the teachable moment that um, you know he he should have mentioned if he had any respect for um, buying precious metals is um, don't get caught up in the fear of missing out. Don't get caught up in chasing metals higher. All right, which, you know, I guess she did a little bit. She said she bought it as it was rising, although it certainly wasn't at a top in 2010. What you want to do is you want to buy your hedge, buy your, um, your protection, your insurance policy, um, when the metals are low. So if you were to take the approach of looking at precious metals and avoiding the blow-off tops, the returns you know, actually could be quite substantial. Let's take another look at that chart. All right, now Dave could have put up a chart of gold like this one, and uh, we could identify the points where you want to buy silver and gold and when you don't want to buy silver and gold. All right, and I think the, the message here that um, 
would uh, would be beneficial to people is you you don't want to wait what you want to do is you want to accumulate when gold is flat when people when there has been a blow off top if you wait till after the blow off top and accumulate over the next few years your basis will be in a really solid position for the next time how do you know there will be a next time in gold and silver because there always is and because um, the currency system is just not sound anymore there's no backing to it now I'm sure you're saying at about this moment, well, um, if you haven't stacked already, what should you do? Because we have had a little bit of a run here. My advice to you would be to start averaging in. Don't make any big purchases. Just start dipping your toe in the water and um, average yourself in over time. All right, thing number three that Dave will never tell you because he is trying to uh, commoditize uh, investing and, uh, and for, for the masses. And in general, he is correct, and there's nobody better than him at learning how to save on a budget and get out of debt, and that's all good stuff. But when it comes to investing, feel free to listen to him for the 90% of your money that might be in the stock market. Not my money. I'm not touching the stock market at the moment. But, you know, for younger people, um, if you want to be in the stock market, that's fine to follow his advice. But you should be aware of what he will never tell you. And the average person just doesn't know because they haven't studied it and thought it all the way through. 401ks and IRAs um, have disadvantages. One of those disadvantages is that it will grow over time, probably. Um, but when you come to take it, it will be taxed. All right, right now um, we have some of the lowest tax rates maybe ever. And, uh, you know, um, you are putting in uh, pre-tax money and you will have to pay taxes when you take it out when you're age 65. Now, what do you think? The way that our governments are being run and our monetary system is being run, do you think taxes will be higher in 10, 20, or 30 years than they are today? Well, I can almost guarantee it. So you may save that magical million dollars in your 401k. Um, however, when you come to get it out, you may only be able to withdraw 500000 or less. Um, it just it, it is a major disadvantage of um, waiting to get your money into your possession. And another thing that many people are worried about is that if the digital world was turned off today, if the electronic world no longer worked, if somebody switched off um, the key to your assets, all right, perhaps we have a much more left-leaning government and they decide that uh, there's a fairer way to allocate the wealth in this country. The first place they're going to go to is electronic digital wealth in the stock market. Compare that to having assets in silver your slacker. possession. Gold, silver, or whatever you might want, or property, or um, um, hard assets. Nobody's coming for those, but the 401ks and the IRAs, you're only going to get back at a fraction of what you have put in after the growth, of course, and I, and I do suspect there will be growth in the stock market. Okay, guys, here we go with number four. Yeah, you know it. Um, it's about premiums. Now, I suspect what had happened to this individual, and this is uh, just a suspicion on my part, but because spot price was actually higher uh, when she was selling, I think she may have been the victim of high premiums. So let's get right on the record right now that for your bullion stack, not for your collector stack, but for your bullion stack, which probably ought to be the majority of your stack, for wealth preservation, you want to pay the lowest premiums possible. That is $3 or less for an American Silver Eagle and under $50-$75 an ounce 
for um, an American gold eagle. Don't pay $28 for an American silver eagle. Don't get it in a cute little case for $31. You want a tube of them and you want it for as close to $400 as you can get. Um, and gold can be gotten a little cheaper if you go to the uh, pre-33 gold. Um, but um, I think that she was probably the victim of one of these uh, marketing companies. And the reason that new stackers find the high price companies is because they put the most money into advertising, as well as cold calling, as well as having, you know, personable salespeople that uh, tell you over and over again how the world is ending. All right? So you just want to avoid them. There's no reason why you have to pay high premiums. There's no reason you have to stack pre-33 gold, for example. There's no reason why you have to have collector coins if you don't want them. And be very careful to keep your, your collection apart from your stack. Just get in there with the low premium and you're doing a great job. If you want to know what to stack, if you're brand new, okay, well, here, here's the 10 second primer, American Silver Eagles, American Constitutional Silver, and American Gold Eagles, we're done. All right, and there's a million other things to stack in a, in a dozen other ways, but if you focused on those three, you'd be A-OK, -okay. because the premiums going in and the premiums coming out are going to be very consistent. Yes, you'll lose a little every time you sell, but if you give all your money to the salesman, and he's earning you know, a commission with high premiums because he's a, um, a good salesman, then you, uh, you, you're going to be getting out at a loss as well. Or you, at a minimum, markets will have to increase substantially before you do. All right, well, I think it's time to wrap up this video. But, uh, you know, Dave, maybe uh, better luck next time, huh? Looks like you kind of missed, uh, you missed the game here. And uh, maybe someday you'll see the value of gold and silver, and it won't suck.